In this week's video, I'm actually going to do some kind of eyepiece shootout. Okay, I just read that a good daytime test of the coatings for your eyepieces is to pop the, the caps on the bottoms and look through the top in daylight and see if there's any light bouncing around in there. Um, my immediate thought is that the BST is at a disadvantage because it's got kind of a clear cap. So I'm going to place that in a black cap. So we're on level playing ground and we'll look through the top and see if one looks better than the other. The paper look pretty much the same to me. Both very deep green, even coatings. I guess it's slightly misleading because the BST's got a larger eye lens. Let me know what you think. Is there a winner out of those two? And this is kind of what the eyepieces look like in the daytime. So you can have a good look. They're similar in size, aren't they? And weight. The two eyepieces in question are both 12 millimeter eyepieces that are gonna give us 63 times magnification with this Heritage 150P that I'm using. So these are the kind of eyepieces you'd be looking at as your first or possibly your second step up from what you actually receive when you buy your first telescope. So one is the good old BST Star Guider, also known as, I think it's called the Astro Tech Paradigm in the States. I think it's got another name by in Europe under TS as well. And this one is a new, it's probably sold by under lots of different names, but First Light Optics have started selling these Stella Lyra long eye relief um, eyepieces. And I think these are quite evenly matched because price wise, that's 50, Stella Lyra is £59 and the Star Guider, the BST Star Guider or Paradigm is £47. This has got 55 degrees apparent field of view. This has got 60 degrees apparent field of view. They both weigh roughly around 170, 180 grams. Six elements in four groups. The Stella Lyra has got seven elements in four groups. And eye relief, the um, LER stands for long eye relief, so you'd hope that would win. This has got 20 millimeters eye relief. And the Star Guide has got 16 mil eye relief. The Star Guide has got a twister pie cup. Still Lyra's got like a fold up, fold down rubber eye cup. So they're, they're very similar in some ways, yet different. So I think it'd be really interesting to see which one of these would be a good step up, first step up for someone um, looking for their first sort of semi-serious eyepiece. So anyway, shall, shall we put one in the telescope and have a look and see what it's like? What shall I start with? I think I'll start with, as I've not tried it, I've tried BSTs before, so I'm going to try these new Stella Lyra long eye relief eyepiece, the 12.5 mil. We'll pop it in. Let's pick a star because the moon's not up yet. The moon's kind of rising in the east over there. That's west over there. We've got Orion over. Ah, I can't lift my arm because I've just had my COVID jab this today. So a bit sore in the arm. Um, so we've got Orion up there, so I can see Beetle Geiss up there. I'm going to point the telescope at Beetle Geist and have a look. It's drifting slowly out towards the edge of the field of view. So I'm just going to see how it behaves. And is it going to deteriorate towards... It's starting to get quite elongated at about 70% out. It's kind of stretching a bit and I can see a bit of red. So I think that's, if I remember rightly, that's lateral chromatic aberration. It's starting to go a bit weird at the edges, but this is a very fast telescope and these are still relatively affordable lenses. So it was sharp until about 70% out and then it started to show a bit of red lateral color shift, but it's not got any worse though. It kind of sort of stayed the same after 70% of the way out to the edge. And we're nearly, we're 90% out now. And it's just kind of gone a bit, a little bit soft, but no worse than it was at 70% out. Interesting. I'm going to do the same thing with the BST now. It's an unusual live commentary, this, but a bit of fun, isn't it? The BST Star Guider, AKA Paradigm. These are just like the, the 
the go-to upgrade eyepiece. They're just such good value for money. Um, it's unarguable, everyone says it, so let's see how it performs. So I'm twisting up the eye cup. Let's compare how comfortable it is as well. It feels a bit more roomy, 55 degrees for the other one, 60 degrees apparent field of view for this one. I'm letting it drift off towards the edge. Still nice and round, but a third out towards the edge. Is it going to hold its form a bit better than the Stella Lyra LER? I would say at this point it's got the Stella Lyra slightly beat. It's going very slightly elongated now, but it's not displaying as much red. It's, the colour shift hasn't gone quite as much as the Stella Lyra. It's definitely a bit rounder out towards the edge. I may have to repeat this once or twice with both eyepieces on my own time to confirm before I post up this video, but I think it's doing a better job out towards the edge. So we're in about 90% of the way out towards the edge now. It's gone a little bit soft and a bit, not much though. That's actually really impressive. Although, one thing I'm noticing is I'm getting all sorts of like a bit more blackouts with this eyepiece. I don't know if it's the distance I've got the eye cup twisted up to. Like, it's a bit more temperamental with eye position. When I'm moving my eye around, I can see changes in the brightness. Like, we can see things moving, like dark and light bits moving. So I move my eye around. I can't think of the technical term, but I didn't notice that with the Stella Lyra. So initially, first impressions of comparing both of these eyepieces is that even though the BST has got a slightly larger field of view of 60 degrees, apparent field of view, compared to the 55 of the Stella Lyra, it's uh, Betelgeist remained sharper out towards the edge. So these PS BSTs seem to be fine with an F5 telescope, which is actually really remarkable for £47. So that's really good. Yeah, it, they do feel a bit roomier, but the certainly you, your eye position's a bit more critical because I can see, I don't know if you call it kidney beaning or blackout. I don't know, it's just a bit. Shadows seem to appear when you move your eyes. I think if I try and find something quite faint and see which one appears the brightest and therefore look at how well the eyepiece is transmit light, I know something faint. I'm going to point it at like Bode's galaxy, the cigar galaxy, and we'll see, see how they both handle that at the edge of visibility in my Bortle 5 skies with a slightly rising moon. Maybe that I can't see it in either. In fact, I'm going to start with the, the BST with 60 degrees for this because it will give me more of a fighting chance of finding the galaxies more quickly. You can use the two stars of the saucepan in Ursa Major to try and find the cigar galaxy. Is it anywhere there? Oh, I'm getting some kind of reflections from somewhere. That's annoying. What is that from? This is with the BST, I can see some kind of... What is that? There's some kind of ghosting or something, that's a bit annoying. I'm trying to find galaxies here. Yeah, that's definitely like a light reflection. Right, I'm gonna keep the eyepiece there because I can see a reflection that's really annoying in that eyepiece in the BST Star Guider. So let's see the same things there in the Stella Lyra. No, it's not. It's flipping not there. So yeah, I reckon the BST definitely handles stars better out to the, ed the edge of the field of view in fast telescopes like the Heritage 150P. And it's quite a roomy eyepiece. 
but there is some kind of like light scatter going on with it or something that the Stella Lyra doesn't suffer from. I mean, we've got to remember that Stella Lyra is about £12 more expensive. You can tell I do more astrophotography nowadays, can't you? Because I can't find, can't find the basics. I need to slap on the wrist for not being able to find the Cigar Galaxy. I suppose I could just blame my skies. It's like a bad workman blaming his tools, that is, isn't it? Okay, after failing to find Bode's Galaxy, which I'm going to blame on the rising nearly full moon, um, I've been looking at the full moon for a few minutes, swapping between the two eyepieces, and I'm having quite a tough time sort of separating them really to be quite honest that if I put the limb of the moon at the edge of either eyepiece you get a tiny little bit of colour fringing which is not intrusive on either eyepiece if I'm honest and then if you look if I for example place Tycho the well-known crater on the moon in the centre of both the eyepieces and try and look at the details in in the crater of Tycho, then I did initially think that the Stella Lyra was a bit sharper on axis, but I think I've kind of talked myself out of that one. Let me just swap it out again. So I'm trying to memorize that little raised patch in the center of Tycho. I'm actually blinding myself in the name of science here, I think, because well, out of laziness, because I can't be bothered to put a moon filter on either of them. Okay, so back on Tycho, let's get in the centre. Yeah. Oh, I think my mind was playing tricks on me. I think they're both just as sharp on axis. Yeah, one last look. They really are both the same. In terms of the detail I'm getting out of them. Anyway, so I'm not sure what I've concluded here other than that they're both really good eyepieces as a, as a first upgrade. But the BST's got the sharper edge performance and the Stellaira's got less kind of artifacts in terms of like kidney beaning and ghosting. BST is a bit cheaper but they're both fairly cheap and yeah so I can see why people really like the BST I mean because that edge performance for £47 is just astonishing really at F5 and <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the um, Stella Lyra either they're both nice eyepieces so yeah choose your choose your weapon uh, okay, so thanks for joining me. I appreciate your support as always. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any tips on how to do eyepiece comparisons better, please leave them in the comments below. Any tips, welcome, because um, hopefully this won't be the last. Until next time, please tell those clouds to sod off. Adios.